My name is Adriana Gascoigne and I'm the founder of Girls in Tech, which is an organization based on the empowerment, education, and engagement of women in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. uh, that was started in San Francisco in 2007 mm -hmm. and has now expanded all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're in six continents with over 9,000 members. And I'm also the founder CEO of a company called Help Learn Asia, mm -hmm. and that is uh, e-learning and intensive workshop circuit uh, catering to um, SMEs who are interested in learning about online marketing tools, mm -hmm. um, specifically in Southeast Asia and then eventually in Greater Asia. So the technology industry, I sort of fell into it. Um, my background is in traditional uh, marketing and advertising. I started my career in Los Angeles working at some big, big agencies, JWT, Hill and Knowlton, um, to name a few. And then I traveled around the world a bit and worked in different places in the United States and then fell into a position in San Francisco um, working at a startup uh, called Gooba and that was a video distribution platform very similar to what YouTube does. And I was super, super amazed by the startup culture and about building products and having um, such an impact um, in, in product development. So I loved it and I stuck, stuck with it um, mm -hmm. and I've stayed with it for, for over seven years. Um, so it's been a really, really exciting journey um, moving around different startups and um, starting my own companies and sort of being a part of the Silicon Valley ecosystem um, and then sort of taking the skills and sort of my network, what I've learned and bringing it to Asia. Um, and not only sharing what I've learned, but also learning from the people here, um, sort of government entities, other entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, angel investors, um, academics, and really understanding what it is that this industry needs here in Asia, and what would actually, what types of technologies would thrive mm -hmm. in this, in this um, geo. Mm -hmm. Well, with Girls in Tech, we are very, we're prolific. We really try, and quality versus quantity, but we also are very nimble in that we feel that Girls in Tech is a resource and a network that should be everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are so many women in technology, women in engineering that we really don't know about. Mm -hmm. So they end up coming out of the woodwork once we introduce the Girls in Tech platform openly and we see that in the Middle East, we've seen that in Asia and now we're, we're, we're seeing it in Africa. So uh, women just want to be able to have a platform to engage with other like-minded women and female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they want to be able to collaborate, share ideas mm -hmm. and really um, have the support uh, of mentors and role models who are interested in paving the path and teaching them the best practices and skills that they've learned um, and to help them succeed in their careers. Mm -hmm. So John Fearon, the founder of Drop My Site, Drop My Email, has partnered with me to, to produce Help Learn Asia. We both come from an online marketing background um, and advertising background, so I think we both see the need and the opportunity um, and the challenges that SMEs face uh, around online marketing. First, there's the net lack of knowledge of what tools exist. And second, there's lack of education on how to apply those tools to help uh, SMEs increase their uh, revenue and help meet them meet their business and marketing objectives. So with the platform that we're creating, it's sort of a dual model. It's one, it's the intensive workshop circuit that uh, we're planning on producing every month um, throughout Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So we'll be teaching courses on um, online marketing, but specifically paid search, SEO, mm -hmm. online advertising, display ads, online PR, social media, um, to name a few, Facebook application, development, etc. And then we'll also be doing an e-learning platform, which is sort of a video tutorial subscription service mm -hmm. where 
um, different SMEs and SMEs that they choose to move forward with this e-learning service, they can utilize all of the videos and share them with their home teams, their, their companies, so that they can have the toolkits right then and there and then apply them to, to building sort of um, their online marketing uh, strategies. So we really feel that this is a model that one, it's an unmet um, gap here, an, an unmet um, challenge, and it's a, a huge opportunity for us um, um, to help them. Yeah, we are thinking after Singapore, which the event will take place January 28th and 29th in Fusionopolis. Um, in Singapore, we are hoping to move uh, the conference to Kuala Lumpur, mm -hmm. and then Jakarta, then Bangkok, mm -hmm. um, then Ho Chi Minh, Bangalore, um, then Greater Asia, mm -hmm. hopefully, which uh, will be Taipei, um, Seoul, Tokyo. Help Learn Asia is actually um, two women and one man. So oh. yeah, yeah. So we, we work really well together, and you know it's it's a team based on merit, based on talent, um, based on drive, um, their interest to be a part of something new and fresh and innovative. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we all share. And even though one of the three of us is used to more uh, traditional um, MNC type of format. Um, sort of go to work at nine, leave at five type thing, and a lot of processes in place. Um, she has done really, really well in acclimating to the startup culture, mm -hmm. um, which is a more flat organization, more of a team team effort and mentorship oriented um, type of environment. So we, we really um, have gelled very nicely. Mm -hmm. And to answer your, your initial question about challenges we face, um, at this moment, we haven't faced many challenges other than time. Mm -hmm. um, time is always very, very scarce as we're trying to ramp up. And you know, we work on the weekends, we work late nights to make sure that um, the the T's are crossed, the, the I's are dotted. Um, but really, work-life balance is also very important to the company. Um, um, but but just as long as all of the deliverables are being met, and you know, our timeline is is um, pretty close to intact, then, then we're good. We're, we, we feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But in producing events, you know, really it is, it, it's a little nerve wracking because you have to make sure that you sell tickets mm -hmm. by a certain period of time, that you manage all of the media partnerships and sponsorships correctly, um, and, and that you, you get the right people there. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's quality versus quantity, and it is sort of the inaugural event, so we want to make sure that it goes off without a hitch, um, so that future events will um, future events will actually, um, you know, sort of go in the, se in the succession of that. That's funny. I always get asked that question in interviews. Um, I'm I'm in a relationship, but I'm not married. And I think that that would be very challenging um, if I were to have a family. But I think that as long as the man plays the same role in raising the children as the female does, um, then I think that it's a lot easier. Also, with startups, there's more flexibility with working from home or working from um, an office or you know, um, you know having that those technological tools, the Skypes and VPN, anything that you need to actually work um, outside of the office, I think it's very, very helpful. Um, also, in Singapore, it's really easy because it's you know help is readily available, um, so you can you can definitely have a family and then and then have um, someone there to mm -hmm. to help around the house and to, to take care of kids every once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I think there's always um, scalability challenges, you know, making sure that the managing directors of each chapter are getting the resources they need from sort of corporate, the corporate office. Um, you know, one thing that we face is retention of the managing directors. We want to make sure that they're getting something out of it um, and that they conti continue to want to cultivate their chapters and, and expand their membership base. 
um, but they will only do so if they're sort of um, emotionally incentivized or motivated. Um, and and that, that take, that's sometimes a little bit challenging because you're working virtually, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't get to see people face to face. And you know, we, we're an all volunteer organization, so people have to be very, very self motivated in order to stay with it. But so far, everything has worked out really, really nicely. Um, you know, the women are very, very intelligent, very respectful of the brand, and very grateful for being part of something we like to call a family mm -hmm. versus um, a specific organization. Um, but, but as Grace Chang from The Straits Times so mm -hmm. nicely noted, it, it, it is a, a global movement. Mm -hmm. And what we're really trying to do is provide a network of very powerful women in tech, um, you know, sharing ideas, sharing skills, um, collaborating, um, whether it's with software programs or hardware or different inventions or innovations, um, being able to communicate across borders, which is extremely valuable, especially when you're talking about you know, um, the developed countries and the non-developed countries. It's like, how do we provide even just the basic educational devices mm -hmm. so that they can access the internet and um, we can help increase the literacy rate, you know? So there's uh, so much more we can do. There's so much we're doing now um, with Girls in Tech, with the professional program, the mentorship program, and the university program, um, but there is really a lot more we can do. In Singapore specifically, we're actually launching um, GIT 360 mm -hmm. and the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference. Um, and GIT 360 is um, an entrepreneur labs program, which will be launched in summer 2013. Mm -hmm. So there'll be an application process, and we'll choose 20 to 30 women who have a concept um, or even a prototype of an inter internet or mobile you know, product. And then we'll have a, a panel of judges to uh, figure out who is actually um, uh, um, able to join the program. And then, and then there's a two-month intensive workshop program on, on sort of the A-Bs and C's of becoming an entrepreneur. So whether it's uh, prototyping, conceptualizing your product, um, in engineering platforms, languages to, to code your product in, or if it's business development or product marketing. It's like really what, what do you need to know in order to, be, to launch a good product and become an entrepreneur. So that's one program. And the other, the Catalyst Conference, is basically a one day or two day conference that highlights the women in tech that are really, really making a difference, um, who are paving the path um, in Asia for sort of the next generation of leaders in, in the tech industry. So whether it's leadership within a high tech company mm -hmm. or whether it's um, um, you know, female entrepreneurship, um, we want to sort of co cover the gamut of women in tech and what they're doing in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Where will all these events be held in Singapore? So the Catalyst Conference will be in late spring in 2013 in Singapore mm -hmm. and the Girls in Tech 360, GIT 360 will be held in late summer 2013. So we have support right now from, from IDA and um, Google and hopefully we'll get a lot more people on board. Um, you know, I think it's just by hard work, by my hard work, mm -hmm. you know. So I think people um, will lead their chapters based on the role models in, in corporate, in girls in tech corporate. And so Kate, Braddock, Evo Lucas, and myself. Um, so Kate Braddock is the president of Girls in Tech. Evo is the chief innovation officer of Girls in Tech. Um, you know, regardless of where we are in the world, she, Kate's in New York, Evo is in Portland, and I'm in Singapore. We, we're a very, very cohesive corporate team. And I think based on our values and work ethic and our passion you know, to make Girls in Tech the best that it can be, I think the managing directors really respect that and you know, want to play a role in this movement. Um, they feel they have to be very self-motivated and really understand the vision for the organization to feel um, the rewards of volunteering and committing and dedicating their spare time to, to building up their, their own respective chapters. 
So in terms of sort of the emotional encouragement, I mean, basically, we are a support group. You know, we, we are here to um, share ideas, to serve as a sounding board um, in case something happens at a conference or something happens at work, you know. We, we are a unit mm -hmm. and we are um, here to provide ideas and advice and guidance where, where necessary. But most importantly, to provide encouragement. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we don't sit there and say, and sob and like, oh, woe is me, woe is me. You know, we create solutions to different challenges that exist in the world out there. Mm -hmm. And um, we're making an impact. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's so wonderful to make an impact collectively around the world versus just one place, um, like say, Silicon Valley. Um, so we are, you know, for example, getting on calls with Saudi Arabia, getting on calls with Pakistan, getting on calls with Zambia, Africa, Uganda, um, Europe, Asia, the US. Um, so really it's, it's very, very inspiring and, you know, um, you know, as much as I, I don't want to call it a support group, but it is sort of a, 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 um, a support group slash family. Um, let's see, so I, I probably have many different types of role models. They've sort of come in and out of my life. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, on a very granular level, I'm inspired by the people um, in Girls in Tech. So the managing directors, the people who are volunteering their time and feel just as inspired as I do to help the next generation of, of female leader, leadership in technology. So by seeing them day to day, building their teams, building program, developing curriculum, um, getting in front of different sponsors and partners and just really blood, sweat and tears mm -hmm. um, to, to um, sacrifice really to, to make their chapters really fruitful, um, that really inspires me. You know, that, that's what keeps me going, that's what keeps me wanting to be, build the organization and be responsible for the success of the overall organization. Um, I think there are other inspirational people in this world that have taken um, you know, fame and fortune and leveraged it in a very, very positive way. Um, this is very, very cliche, but I love Oprah. I think she's absolutely a wonderful role model for, for women. Um, not only because she's had to build her life and her career from nothing, uh, but she has also taken, uh, like I said, the fame and fortune that she's created organically for herself and built conferences, built one of the most powerful media networks in the world, has made a lot of money and given it back to different sort of community efforts, to women's efforts, to um, charities in Africa, specifically for, uh, for schools, to build schools and educational organizations. You know, she's she's to be respected because I think um, at the end of the day her passion and vision is to help people. Um, she just happened to be really good at you know being an anchor woman and an actor actress and whatnot and a host um, and so she was able to leverage which, the money she made in order in, in order to do what she really was passionate about. Mm -hmm. I also think Cheryl Sandberg makes a really good role model uh, for women in technology. Uh, both women in, as intrapreneurs as well as entrepreneurs because she provides um, really good advice and guidance uh, for women who want to sort of move up the corporate ladder pretty fast in high-tech companies and she also encourages entrepreneurialism so innovation, creativity and leadership skills. So she has provided a voice sort of on a mass scale. She's obviously not extremely accessible because she is sort of a high profile type of person, but I think she does make a really, really good effort in, in uh, being vocal about her opinions and what she believes in. Um, and I, I just love her work ethic. I think she's really made an impact in the, in the technology industry. And unfortunately, there are not many other female women in tech at her level that really, really stand out or who have prioritized um, um, mentorship for uh, you know, younger women, sort of the next generation of leaders in, in technology. Um, I know there's you know, the Marissa Myers and um, Meg Whitman and Carly Fiorina, but 
Um, you know, I haven't really seen as much activity from them as I, I have from Cheryl Sandler. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, it's necessarily an advantage. Um, I think really if you're if you're if you're good at what you do, mm -hmm. then you'll achieve success. Mm -hmm. Period. Um, I create or develop the company culture based on personalities and based on uh, passion, um, not even necessarily skill set because I feel that that can be learned. I feel that if somebody is really eager to be involved in the startup and really is enthusiastic about the idea um, and your personality, personalities mesh, um, then I think it will work out quite nicely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody could be sort of a genius when it comes to you know, video production, mm -hmm. but if um, the longevity of their tenure is, is short because you yeah, have personality um, um, issues or that they don't really understand the corporate culture, sorry, the startup culture, then it becomes challenging. <laughs> I think the main thing is not really about gender, it, it really just is about personalities and how you interact. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, there are some cultural nuances that you can't help, you know, um, you know, certain um, cultures, it's, it, in certain cultures it's very difficult for people to do business with women. Oh. And so, um, for example, here in Asia I had an interesting experience where I went to go speak with an investor and was answering all the, the questions directly to the male investors and they would answer, um, they wouldn't even look at me when they would respond or looked at somebody else and, and responded to the other men even though I was the one providing the information. So either they didn't really feel comfortable interacting with me or they forgot that I was in the room. But you know, even at this at, even at, a, at at any level, you know, you should be respected, but it's pretty um, it's a pretty unfortunate experience, you know. I, I don't think that, that is just limited to Asia though. I think it just in certain industries um, it's just more, it's still an old boys network, and so that's something that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Become entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's the best way to go. No, but I, I think there's something to be said about corporate. I think when you get out of college, um, right, when you, when you get out of college, I think depending on the courses that you took, um, sometimes it's good to go to a larger corporation because they teach you the basics, the skills. Um, whether you know it's writing skills or database management or you know whatever it may be, um, you're able to access um, a lot of the tutorials, programs, things that um, the corporations will pay for. Mm -hmm. They'll um, subsidize the costs, and um, you'll learn a lot of the basics. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, you know, because then you have sort of your own personal um, toolkit, which is very marketable for other types of endeavors. Later on, you maybe hopefully go to a startup and then eventually start your own company. So I'm of the mindset that the best job in the world is a startup and becoming an entrepreneur and sort of taking your, your life into your own hands. Um, you know, it's obviously easier said than done. You have to raise money and report back to the investors and make sure that you become profitable at some point. But I think um, the culture is, it's a lot of fun. You get to focus on products that are really cool and innovative and different mm -hmm. and you get to work with the people that you really like to work with. Mm -hmm. um, every day is so much fun going to work and it doesn't seem like an actual job so that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. So my biggest advice for female entrepreneurs is really to just take risks. Really go out on a limb um, be sort of find that sort of self motivation to take a product idea, take um, a concept that they've been thinking about producing, and and prototype it. Um, the resources here um, are available, and the government and different organizations are creating programs to support and to back these these great ideas. Also, the university programs here are really really um, solid. So I think it's important to tap into the resources, entrepreneurial resources that exist, and then take those risks. There are a lot of incubators that um, 
that women can also join Girls in Tech, I guess that is launching um, GIT 360 in, in the summer time, so definitely look into that. Um, also there's Founders Institute, there's JFDI, there's many other organizations that could help. Um, you're not alone, you know. I, I think that one thing that women take a lot of responsibility and, you know, try to multitask a little too much where they take on too much pressure. And really there are, there are advisors, there are professors, there are um, investors, um, people in the ecosystem that can help you um, if you need an introduction, if you need to find seed funding, um, if you need advice on recruitment, etc. Um, you're not alone. There, there is opportunities to get those resources when necessary. Um, and lastly, I think it's very important to be a part of Girls in Tech because <laughs> we have built a, a, a network um, that that is not replicatable anyway, if, that, if that's even a word. It, it's, it, it's something like I've never seen before because I think the women in Singapore um, specifically are very, very humble and you know, they're eager to learn and eager to grow together as a team. And I think it's very important to have that support network when you're trying to build a company. It's very, very, very lonely as an entrepreneur sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, because you're working with small teams and you're working your butt off, but a lot of times, you know, you go through hiccups, you go through peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to be able to um, have that sounding board, have that support group when, when you're in, in, in the dumps, you know. Um, you have to make sure that, that um, you have people there to help guide you. So I think Girls in Tech um, Singapore has definitely created that, that platform, that ecosystem for women in tech. So, And it's very telling that we've grown to over 675 members within a few months. Mm -hmm. So the women here have done a great job, phenomenal job um, of developing the, the programs and curriculum, very customized to Singaporean, Singaporean women mm -hmm. and expats, but you know, Singapore. Yes. <laughs> um, I would like to talk about Help Learn Asia a little bit. We're really excited about our inaugural event, which is happening on January 28th and 29th. Here in Singapore is a fusionopolis, the Genexus Theater. Um, tickets, early bird tickets are $225. General admission tickets are $250. And of course, if um, you're a Tech in Asia reader, then you get a discount. Thank you. Uh, no problem. And you know it'll be a very, very sort of one of a kind conference um, slash workshop. We're bringing in the experts from all over the world to teach really the um, hardcore intensive um, tools that SMEs are going to need to know to to um, build out their online marketing strategies, mm -hmm. and in the end, you know, increase revenue for their businesses. So it's a very, very powerful, different, cutting edge approach to. Um, engaging with the SMEs and providing them what they need so they don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on um, agencies and don't even know what to expect um, um, in terms of ROI from them. So we really feel that it, it will be a strong conference not only in Singapore but throughout th Southeast Asia and we will be launching our e-learning platform, our video tutorial platform soon thereafter. So check out helplearn.asia. We have localized experts that will be coming in as well, teaching some of the courses. So I would say 50% are in Singapore, uh, are Singaporeans, and then 50% are from the U.S., Australia, Europe, who will be will be flying in to teach the courses. Yeah. Anything else you would like to add? I think that's it. <laughs> I'm out of content. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you too. Yeah.